This morning, we're also checking in back with a team of climate researchers at the University of Arizona. Yeah, part of the work at Tasting Tomorrow is to find new recipes that we can grow with food in the future, right? Uh, Brooke, uh, I referred to this earlier saying I brought back some prickly pear that they're growing out there to sort of make that feature. Mm -hmm. So it's really fun. And two team members this morning are going to show us some native fruits and peppers. They're talking about keeping these crops alive, but just in case, also preparing to substitute a staple food if that day comes. Of course, they have I first showed you how the Tasting Tomorrow team tweaked a traditional Spanish recipe with Sonoran tepary beans. Here, ecologist Aaron Reardon is walking me through some of the lesser known foods that are native to our region, like the sweet white pomegranate brought to the Sonoran Desert somewhere around the 17th century. And that flavor is so sweet. You know, it doesn't have any of that tartness mm -hmm. that, that a a uh, pomegranate that more many people might be more familiar with. They have things that are more relative newcomers that are domesticated elsewhere, um, but have become adapted to the, the climate that we have here. Reardon then let us sample the chilte bean pepper. More local chefs are infusing these spicy little guys into their recipes. Well, I feel like it's a lot more complex than some of the other dried chilies that I cook with. It's almost got more of like a vegetal flavor and smell to it. And you can see that people over, again, thousands of years have domesticated for more spice, less spice, bigger fruits, fleshier fruits. Reardon and the tasting team also think the prickly pear could star in more dishes outside of a cocktail glass. Something more melon-like? Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Yeah, sometimes some of these taste almost like watermelon. Yeah, or cantaloupe if they're really That's, sweet. Yes. Reardon is helping researcher Jonathan Keats. He tells me tasting tomorrow is a literal gut check. The team wants people to understand how changes in climate could viscerally affect them if conditions get hotter and drier. When we look at places in the world that today have a climate that Tucson will experience in around 50 years, it turns out that Central Australia is one of them. And if communities have to change crops, some food substitutes may not taste just right at first. But Keats says he thinks cultures can learn to adapt. I think there's enough that there is still some potential for a sense of continuity and connection with, with our identity, with our community. And surprising there, all those foods, uh, never would have tasted them before, guys, especially, you know, prickly pear as it was. It was, yeah. again, really delicious. I'm going to re repeat that and just say I never would have expected it. And the project right now, they're looking at a yam. To, uh, oh. Keats mentioned Central Australia. They grow it there, but it still requires a careful process. If you don't soak it enough, it's toxic to eat at first. Oh, wow. So that was learned probably the hard way to realize how you can eat it. But it could help substitute the Kashaw winter squash that autumn communities here in Arizona have grown for centuries. So very, very at cool. least preparing for the possibility. Love that.